Hey everybody, how's it going? Today we're going to be going over and showing you how to install the replacement air tank valve for Kurt Flex Air and Trail Air fifth wheel pin boxes. So here is what our replacement tank valve looks like installed. This is actually going to be an exact replacement for the factory tank valve. So this isn't any sort of aftermarket part another manufacturer makes. This is the one the manufacturer made and equipped from this pin box originally. So it is an exact fit replacement. So there's a couple different reasons that you may want to replace the valve here on your pin box. Number one, someone who's just overhauling their pin box, they do make quite a bit of replacement parts for these, such as the airbag and the strut. So while you're doing that, you might as well just replace the tank valve as well. But one of the more common reasons that people replace this is that it can actually leak over time from one reason or another. It could be the threads and how they thread into the airbag, or it could be the actual inflation valve at the top. It is a potential for leaks. So a good way to check that is just take a soapy water solution once you've inflated your system and just spray everything down and that'll easily allow you to identify the cause of your air leak, whether it's the actual air spring or the inflation valve. So in regards to compatibility, this specific valve here is gonna work on a couple different pin boxes. Whether you have the Kurt Flex Air, the Lippert Trail Air Flex Air, or the Ultra Frab Trail Air pin box, this is going to be the correct replacement air tank valve. So now that we've gone over the replacement part here, let's go ahead and show you how to install it. So before we start our installation, we need to make sure that we've removed all the pressure from the airbag. So we're gonna remove that yellow cap there. And then we're gonna take some sort of object there so we can depress the plunger inside that valve. Just make sure all the air is out. We've already done that, so there shouldn't be too much shooting out here, but you're basically just gonna be listening for it. And I can't hear any more air coming out. So now we're ready to remove the valve. We're gonna take a deep well 9 16 inch socket. You can see we have a little cut out here. So we're gonna place that over the valve. Now this is on there pretty tight, but we're just gonna break it loose here. Once we get it broken loose, it should be a lot easier to remove. There is some thread tape on these threads here. Just go ahead and remove it, just like so. So now if we look down inside this little cutout here, we wanna make sure that we get all that thread tape off there. Um, we don't necessarily wanna use any material to clean that out because we don't want anything falling back into the bag. Just kind of take your finger here and get as much of that extra thread tape out as you can. Next, we're gonna take our valve here and we'll just begin threading it into the bag by hand. So you are gonna get some resistance after a couple turns because that white stuff on the threads there is a thread sealer or a thread tape, which we need in order to make sure air doesn't escape through the threads. So once you get a couple turns there, you shouldn't be able to turn it anymore by hand. We'll have to switch over to our wrench here. And now we'll begin tightening it. So there isn't an exact torque value for this. Um, it's gonna be more or less by feel and also sight. We're gonna give it a couple turns. We're gonna remove our wrench and just sort of judge how much of the threads are into the bag here. So I'm gonna go a little bit more. I kind of eyed the factory one to see how much they had tightened it down. And they actually went on there quite a few turns. So we're gonna to try to mirror that as best as we can. But looking down there now, I would say we have a good amount of threads into the bag there. There's only a couple more on top. All the uh, thread locker is on the threads there, so it should seal up pretty nicely. And I think we're gonna call that good as far as tightening down. Now we wanna ensure that there's no leaks. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the cap and we're going to inflate our system here. Now I don't have an exact PSI for you guys. Um, I would just hold it on there for a couple seconds. So don't go too overboard here, but we do need enough air in there to introduce any leaks if they are present. So I'll go ahead and hold that on there for a few seconds. Call that good. And now I'm gonna come back with a soapy water solution. And we're gonna spray down this fitting here. And basically what we're looking for is wrapping forming bubbles around the threads here that our valve screws into the airbag. So we'll go ahead and spray that down there and look it over to make sure there's no leaks present. So that pocket in there does kind of hold water, but I'm not seeing any bubbles escaping from there. So that's gonna ensure that we don't have any leaks there. Now, wrapping forming bubbles, they're gonna get slow bubbles because it is soap after all, but basically we're looking for those rapid forming ones. And again, that's gonna indicate a leak. If we did have a leak, we wanna turn, tighten this up a couple more turns or back it off and reapply some thread sealers such as some thread tape. Go ahead and tighten it down again. But as you can see here, we don't have any bubbles whatsoever. Therefore, I've ensured that the tank valve is installed correctly. Next, we're gonna take a paper towel here, just try to get as much of that water down in there out as we can. 
not looking for perfection here, just getting as much as we can out. And then once that's done, we'll just simply reinstall our cap here. But there we go. That's gonna do it today for our look and installation of the replacement tank valve for the Kurt Flex Air or Trail Air fifth wheel pin boxes.